Oh. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, as I mentioned on the last one, if you were not part of the last session with me, uh, I totally understand life has us all in many different places at many different types. Uh, so if you can be on camera, great. If you can't, great. Um, I'm grateful for just the opportunity to have this discussion with you. Um, as I mentioned, I have a brief presentation, but really what we'll be discussing today um, is on the topic of um, responsibility and accountability. Um, the actual title of it is responsibility with no accountability. However, um, there's a little more complexity to this relationship and we'll talk a little more about that. But um, I'm a believer in group discussions. I'm a believer in that this is not something that I am a, a subject matter expert. I have lived experience and I would love to share my lived experience as well as uh, hear what everyone else has to say. Um, I'll start off by saying my name is Daniel Chacon. I am with an organization called the Elisa Ann Roosh Byrne Foundation. We're a nonprofit based out of uh, California. We service all of the state of California, working with burn survivors and their families, anyone who's been impacted by a burn injury, usually in a camp or recreational format. So we do a variety of different things. I've been with our organization for uh, 10 plus years now. Um, my background before this is I, I worked as a firefighter, high school teacher, found my way into nonprofits at a very early age, knew that I was very connected to um, the social service and helping community, knowing that I wanted to work in uh, improving the lives of those who've gone through some form of trauma, found myself into this burn community and completely fell in love. Um, it is in this community that I say a lot of times that I found my place and my belonging, as I hope that would also be the case for a lot of people that we service. Um, we do a summer camp. Uh, we do a lot of different recreational programming, skiing, kayaking, surfing. Um, I believe a lot in the power of recreation as a means where burn survivors from my community can get the support that they need. And I found a very kinship to what you guys are doing out here um, at your own respective camps and really love to, to learn more from you guys as I feel this is a reciprocal relationship and some great parallels moving forward. Uh, as I mentioned, this session is about responsibility and accountability. So what I'm going to go ahead and do at this time is kind of just share with you my screen. Um, I love interaction. I love not feeling like I'm talking at you guys. So feel free to chime in, unmute yourself. You got a question, put something in the chat. I'll monitor the chat. I'll, I'll let you guys unmute yourself. This time is a dialogue again. So please feel free to at any time to do that. Before I actually go into the presentation, um, like I did in the last session, I'd love to know who you are, where you're coming from. Um, those are just some basic things. I love to really understand what state you're representing, maybe even your role at camp. That's a great uh, conversation as, and if honestly, if this is the size of the group, I would be really, really open to that um, because I think this is, would be a great time where we can really go through some of these things. And then also I would love to hear um, from each of you. So go ahead in the chat if you can, just pop in your name, what state you're coming from or Providence or wherever you're at. And then um, maybe your position at camp, you can tell me if it's paid or unpaid. Um, my organization, I, I work for the organization, so I'm a paid employee for a foundation, um, but we predominantly do most of our programming uh, through volunteers. Um, so it really will talk about whether it's paid or volunteer and how that plays into accountability and responsibility, um, but love to hear from you guys where you're coming from. So you got some South Carolina, a North Carolina, Colorado, I love Colorado. Um, where else we got? New York, San Antonio, Michigan, Phoenix. I was just in Phoenix last week. Um, so great. Awesome. Super glad to have everyone here. Super glad to hear you all. Larry, uh, Houston. Larry, sorry we couldn't be in your, your home state and in your city. Wish we could have. Great, love hearing all that. If you, again, if you can go on camera, great. If you can't, totally fine. Um, let's go into why you're even here. So I would love to know in your intent, what you're looking to get out of today's uh, conversation. Um, if we can keep it kind of brief, uh, because I wanna keep the conversation more towards the latter part of where we go in tangibles. I kind of feel like we, we lost a lot of the conversation and good discussion of everyone's personal stories and what they're struggling in. But if you can briefly summarize what you're hoping to get out of this session today, um, that would be really beneficial for me as we start to navigate this conversation. So um, just because I appreciated his comments last time, I'm gonna throw it out to Dennis. 
my buddy Dennis, can you kick us off on your intentions? I'm not sure I have clear intentions for this session, um, other than to be here and to learn and to glean from others what what their experiences are uh, connected to this accountability component, because um, I, I think that's an important piece when you're working in an organization that's dynamic from paid staff to volunteer staff to a volunteer board uh, and how you balance accountability for um, for all of those different groups of which the majority of them are donating their time. So that's that can be a, a sticky wicket. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, next on my birdie bunch view, I have Katie. Yeah, I would echo um, what he was saying. I, I I think just trying to figure out how we can empower um, our staff long time and new to, you know, not only have a sense of responsibility for what they're, why they there, but, you know, just, I don't know, making the most of their experience and making sure people are there for the right reasons and um, empowering them to make it the best experience possible, I guess. Thanks, Katie. Uh, if you uh, can't uh, unmute yourself, you're happy, please, like other people have been putting their answers in the chat, I'm totally fine with that, okay, with that too. If your reason also for being here is that you thought this was one of the sessions with Dave or Sam, that's totally fine. I know they would, they're way better than at this than I am, but you're free to leave right now. Or if your excuse is that your boss told you to be here, sorry, you're stuck with me. You're just gonna have to give some notes over to them. Um, let's go over to, uh, let's see, Diana, uh, not, not Dina? Yep, Dina, thank yeah, you. Um, I work with Dennis at Camp Tecumta and so um, echo a lot of his sentiments as, as well. And just looking to see if others are having similar experiences. Um, as us and to potentially gain some information of how to kind of bridge um, those relationships and our intentions and um, you know how we can be more of a team in all pieces to um, a bigger puzzle that are carrying out our mission. Great, awesome. Spencer. Um. To uh, get a more holistic view on how different people approach a similar issue in different ways. Awesome. Um, you have some other things in the chat. Those are everyone who's on. I know that Larry put something just listening in about to um, pick up your daughter. Totally fine. Thanks, Larry, for being here. We appreciate that. Um, Ashley, I'm not sure if you're able to jump off uh, a mute. Yep. Um, sorry for no camera camera today is not working super well with my internet. Um, so I'm newer to my role um, and I just started about a month ago and I've actually been a volunteer at the camp that I'm now the director of. Um, so I'm new to the accountability side of it all um, and kind of seeing how that pairs from that um, perspective. And so just kind of getting a general understanding about what other people do and some best practices would be helpful as I start to kind of navigate um, who's accountable for what and all the players in the in the game. Awesome. So there, there was another person who is new, Jennifer also um, out of Camp Discovery was also new and interested in learning what others had to say on the topic. Uh, what about Erica? Erica, are you able to go off mute? Maybe not. Okay, we can move on. Uh, Alexandra. That's okay, Erica. I know. Thanks for putting in the chat, uh, both for faculty and volunteers. Great. Uh, we can address both of these um, and, and talk a lot about these things. So uh, if I didn't call you or if you didn't put in the chat, feel free to unmute yourself. I want to make sure I give everyone the opportunity um, all great reasons, all very, very similar, right? And we can talk about the difference between uh, what these terms mean um, in both parts. So I have a few slides. I'm gonna go ahead and share my PowerPoint at this time and we'll kind of just get kicked in and get into this right now. Um, always nice when the person goes in the very end of the PowerPoint, right? <laughs> you got all, the, all of it. So. Like I mentioned before, responsibility with no accountability is the title of the session. Um, I actually, when, when Dave was, we were 
all discussing what this would look like, um, what really stood out to me was this uh, interesting dynamic of how we associate these two terms. And it was almost this yin and yang almost, um, and this odd uh, oddity because I felt like one went into the, uh, resulted in the other. But as I really started to think about this, both on an tangible life lived experience and also thinking about the concepts um, of what we're looking for and the culture that we want to bring, I really started to think about how it's less than one then results into another or is needed, but that they, they live in a symbiotic, right? So you can't have responsibility without some form of accountability um, because, and we'll talk about definitions in a second. Um, so I don't want to get ahead of myself before I go into that, but really, I, I really find this, these two words to be really interesting because I think what we the power of words and power of what we think a word means um, may not be actually what other people think. And I really want to talk about that as we get into this, because I think a lot of time people go into, um, like I mentioned before, there's sometimes a power play or an ego play into these. So when we think of something like accountability, it may resonate differently for certain people what that means. And sometimes think it, people think of it um, in a certain way. So going into this, Curious, curious, please unmute yourself. I don't want to be talking this whole time. I'd love to hear you guys. Let's make this interactive. What is responsibility to you, right? What, is that, what does that look like? Put it in the chat, unmute yourself. Tell me what you think responsibility means. I wish I had the, um, like, is it the Jeopardy? The do, 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 do. I wish I had some sound effects in this. Feel free to put something in the chat. Don't want to all answer at once. Just having a specific job to do. Specific job, sure. Being accountable for what happens in the outcomes. Being accountable for what happens in the outcomes, okay. Something people can take ownership of and kind of run with and make it their own. Ownership, love it. Um, meeting objectives, or having objectives meeting. to meet. Yeah, love it. I'm gonna say something. Um, for me, it's always been a uh, responsibility to me is doing what I am going, what I am telling others I am going to do. So hmm. verbal, uh, ver verbal uh, things that I say are backed up by my actions. Awesome. See some consistency and I also see some, you know, some interesting concepts of how, how we do this. I'm going to say um, doing what you say you, uh, you're you going to do or you would do. Yeah. So like you, you say you're going to do something similar to what Jennifer just said. Um, I'm going to say that responsibility for me, before I really dived into what I thought responsibility is, I really started to think about like it was more of like, what other people tasked me to do. And for a while, I really thought about like, oh, it's like my work responsibility, right? This is, these are my responsibilities and it took in that realm. And then I stepped back to say, sometimes I take on things and it's my responsibility. So sometimes my responsibility is like getting up <laughs> in the morning, right? That's my responsibility of like, my dog feeding my dog. That's my responsibility. That I'm in, I'm in, I'm in tasks to do that. If I don't feed my dog, my dog might not eat. So um, responsibility can be both something that someone has asked you to do, something you committed to do, something in your mind that you set you were going to do and that you're claiming maybe. So I heard the word claiming or saying you're going to do. Well, I'm gonna share this, uh, this image, right? So responsibility, what it's not is doing everything, right? I think sometimes when we think about it in the workplace, oh, responsibility, like that person has responsibility we take them as they are like doing everything, right? Or we take it in the opposite, they are in charge. So someone who has responsibility or someone, they're either a person of authority or the person who's doing everything, right? And, and I wanna take a step back to say like, that's not how I wanna view responsibility moving forward. Instead, when I wanna think about responsibility, I wanna think about it in these terms, right? Responsible 
to uh, to execute, you know, a duty or to complete a task, right? So responsibility can be ongoing and responsibility can be short term. So there's two different experiences of what we define that to be um, in a workplace or even outside of that. Responsibility also can be shared, right? So responsibility doesn't have to mean that you only are the only person who is in charge of something or that it's your job to do it. You can be doing it in a team environment with multiple people to have a goal, right? So um, responsibility cannot technically be assigned to someone. A person must choose to also take on that responsibility. When I read this and as I was thinking about this, it was kind of a, a little, shook me up a little to be like, that's true. How can I have the response? If, if I did not decide, right, and, and say that my significant other was like, it's your responsibility to do this. And unless I agree to it, am I really responsible for it? Have I, have I really signed up for that? And this one out of all three really shook me when we talk about how this will play in a camp, right? So if um, I will say this later, but I'll say it now too, just as, just as a forecasting, if I don't know what I'm supposed to do and I don't do it, can I really be held accountable to that? Um, and I think that's an interesting play when it comes down to some of the dynamics we're seeing in our camp environments. And then lastly, um, specifically task focus, you know, who has what role, what does that entail, what must be done, in what order must be done, and I'll even add on to that, when should it be done, what is the, the due date if it's a task per se, right, so this is important when it comes down to the execution of it, um, and the responsibility and how that gets broken down, but these are all good elements when I think about the term responsibility. Now going on the other side of responsibility, what do we think accountability is? And I can tell you before I give you guys a chance to unmute yourselves or put in the chat, uh, this is not what accountability is, right? This is what we may all think about. It's the finger pointing, you didn't do this, or this wasn't done, or this wasn't done correctly, right? Um, this is how we might feel when accountability is done. This is what we might think we should be doing when accountability is asked of us. Um, but what do you think the term accountability really means in your experience and what either how you felt as a supervisor or how you have felt as someone supervising you? Um, I think it's both um, standards set by yourself and standards set by others um, and then meeting those standards. Hmm. I like it. Holding your, Alexandra, holding yourself to a standard. I think accountability is um, one's recognition of their responsibilities and and the execution successfully of those responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say accepting responsibility. Accepting the responsibility, great. Anyone else thoughts on what accountability looks like? I would say it's also recognizing when things don't go as planned, when you're accountable, you acknowledge, you will take corrective measures, you know, you're, you're responsible for that outcome. Uh, Jennifer said, answering for your actions for better or for worse. Mm, great. Do we see that there is almost kind of a similarity to this responsibility and accountability? Like, I, I feel like sometimes what I'm seeing is that like, they can't live without each other and yet they, they need each other, right? So I can't, like I mentioned before, am I really responsible for something that I didn't even know and I didn't take ownership of? Is that still my responsibility? And can you hold someone accountable for that, like, can I hold anyone accountable if um, if they didn't claim responsibility? So there's this um, synergy between the two of them. I think it's really interesting. I think what I think about in terms of accountability, and I'm, I appreciate a lot of the the comments that you've all said, was it is accountability of myself, keeping myself accountable, right? Am I holding myself to a standard? 
and then maybe even accountability to a supervisor, but probably more so than I would say even a supervisor would be the accountability to the task itself, right? So it's not so much I'm accountable to the organization, I'm accountable to my supervisor, I'm accountable to complete the responsibility that I agreed I was going to do. So um, here are some interesting things of what uh, I found when it, it came to accountability. Accountability is literally the ability and or the duty to give account of the events, tasks, or experiences that was a part of that responsibility, right? So I love that it said and or the duty um, because I think for me, like it really goes into this action uh, process. Accountability uh, for task, um, both the process and the service, right? So you can complete a task. I can, my responsibility is to be a greeter at Walmart. I said, hello. You know, and but I say in a very angry tone, my accountability in that is that I've done what I said I was going to do within that specific task. But the process or the service that I gave within completing the task could be a different thing that must be addressed, right? So it also, I think I love this uh, multifaceted thing of something could be completed, but was it done well? Was it done on time? Was all the other factors and going back to the responsibility thing of finding those parameters. Um, you know, I, you, I'm not going to read through all of these because I think you guys are more than capable of doing it. And also, I'm happy to share some of these definitions and these brief slides with you. But what really stands out for me is being accountable often means that the person is liable to face consequences for something, for some authority, um, if the task isn't completed successfully. Um, and that really, that facing the consequences was something that I resonated with and saying, this is where we can take the feel good, emotional side of it to say, at the end of the day, there are consequences for all actions. Some consequences are smaller, but if something isn't done and you've taken responsibility, how to then hold someone to what those consequences may, may be, right? And actually as a supervisor or as someone in a person who is authority, allowing people to understand that the consequences are there for them to experience that with you so they understand why it is so important that they do what they are supposed to do or why they're not doing what you told them not to do. So I really thought that was an interesting uh, dynamic as we, we begin our conversation into what we want to talk about in camp. The big focus that I wanted to also talk about though as we talk about de definition is really some of these and I'm going to um, in a second you're going to end our slides and kind of begin our conversation of what we think this looks like in camp but and I'll come back to this but I wanted to focus on some of the positive accountabilities and, and the positives of having accountability because if we just have responsibilities and we're working in a silo and there are not checks and balances in what we are offering and what we are doing we are also are not getting the benefit of what accountability can give. And with positive accountability, and I wanna use the word positive for a reason, because when we look at this, there are examples of people's uh, ability as a supervisor, it is your responsibility to hold someone accountable for something. But again, you could do your responsibility, but it can be done incorrectly and not successfully. So focusing on that, your responsibility to give positive accountability, is super important because it's going to result in better outcomes and, and the consequences are going to be uh, less. So I really wanna just give you guys this perspective of what positive accountability is and why we need accountability in these checks and balances as we operate camps and as we work with young people, because for a lot of this, I mentioned in the last session, it's a lot of mirroring, right? So what we are offering and when we think about accountability or responsibility um, is not just pertaining to the uh, staff to volunteer ratio or the ED to their employee ratio. But it's also talking about what is that accountability and responsibility look like for our campers? And what are we modeling within our camp culture that our campers might be picking up on and maybe not seeing that there's accountability for actions. So if you have a zero tolerance for fighting, right? And it's a responsibility of the camper to follow the rules and guidelines that you have as a camp, 
and they are, and you're not holding them to being accountable. And you're saying, oh, they're such a good kid. It was a one-time situation. They didn't really mean to push them. Therefore, the accountability is not there. Therefore, there then are going to be bigger issues that you may see within your camp. So looking at this, not only on one level, but multiple levels and multiple ways that we should be mirroring these words and living them out. Um, so in this, I also want to breach the conversation of accountability just isn't for something. And you guys already answered this when we even talked about whose responsibility or what does accountability look like? Because you said the standards I set for myself, right? Holding myself to a standard. And then we also know that there's accountability on another level from those who are supervising us that there is someone. But I really want us to focus on this accountability because um, not to get all cheeky and to uh, pop culture, but uh, Michael Jackson's the man in the mirror, right? So what do I have control over, right? What can I do personally? So starting with self, right? We all have responsibilities. I can also hold myself accountable. So if I said I'm going to do something, I need to do something, and I want to make sure that there are systems in place that I follow through what I've said I'm going to do. Otherwise, there will be consequences for that, meaning people won't trust me. People won't find me dependable. Uh, people may in the relationship or walk away from volunteering or walk away um, from the organization altogether. So really taking it from an internal perspective as well as an external perspective of like, how do I offer accountability to others? Both of them being positive accountability. So what does this look like in camps? So I wanna hear from you guys. Obviously you came to the session for a reason. You came to learn about accountability and responsibility. What does this look like in your camp dynamics? I know that some of you already briefly mentioned it in just what you're hoping to get from it, but give me some examples and let's work through this of what are some tangible ways to, to see positive accountability lived out? Oh, come on. I know that your camps are not perfect. I know that there's some, there's some drama going on. The last you had in person or even virtual, someone was supposed to do something and they didn't do it. Or, you know, back to your point, Dennis, you, you, they're volunteers, right? And they're not going to do what they're going to say they do. Let's, let's really hash it out, bring out the dirt. I, I think it, I think, it, I mean, I can't to come to you've heard me say and ad nauseum heard me talk about restorative practices. We use restorative practices as part of our mechanism for accountability. Um, as much as we have proactive circles, we have responsive circles to hold people accountable. And there's a very structured way of doing that as part of our P. And so we, especially with our campers, we have very meaningful responsive circles with our campers when something goes off course um, and, we, and we use that structure to do that. We, we aren't as good at using it with our volunteer staff, um, but we're going to be better. We're going to get better. I think there was some misunderstanding previously about how to use it, um, but we, we've now done a full two-day training and, and have people in a much better place on how to, how to use the accountability component of it. Um, so that, that looks like everything from small and prompt to pull asides to have conversations about things to more formal sit downs to really serious sit down circles um, with a scripted set of questions that we ask in order to bring forward the affect of what's happening in order to really get to the bottom of what's the root cause of what's happening. Um, and, and oftentimes shame plays a pretty big role in what's happening. And it's really helping people get get through their shame and move beyond their shame to a place of responsibility so that they can actually take an appropriate step forward, whatever that step forward may be. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's, that's a, in a nutshell, what, what we try to do at, at camp and, and are working on, we're a work in progress for sure. I love that shame component and we can definitely bridge that because I think that's a lot of um, what we see when it comes down to maybe balls getting dropped or things not being followed through on something is this 
fear-based mentality that some of the health of in mental health we a lot of it we define as um self-preservation right and and making sure that we we're going to be okay so i'm not going to maybe own up to what i have not done or i'm maybe not going to say i don't understand how to do this instead it may be just something that doesn't happen and then instead of me bringing that up to a supervisor or saying something maybe there's a lot of shame around that right and a lot of like it, um a lot of things that i think we can definitely go into that conversation other people um, things that you are personally struggling with or things that you are doing well that you think in terms of this accountability piece that like is really there when the responsibility is given. Um, yeah, I believe that a big part of giving someone responsibility and then being able to hold them accountable is having personal buy-in from the person. And in my experience, some of the best times when it's gone well and when I've been surprised about assigning responsibility to someone that maybe I thought couldn't fully handle it has been when I was able to sort of pinpoint a task for them to do where I know that they'd personally buy in because it's a lot easier to hold someone else accountable if they're holding themselves accountable first. And that generally starts with finding something that they will buy into themselves. And I understand that 70 to 80% of the time, that's just not going to be possible because there's going to be those tasks that no one wants to do, even you're not going to do. And aside from that, I've definitely found that this is very easy to say, but sometimes harder to do is I would ne when I was in my positions of power during the summers is I'd never ask someone to do something that I wouldn't do first. So if you have this staff there for the whole summer, I'm the first person to deal with the septic issue, knowing that the next five times someone else will step up knowing that I did it first. Appreciate that. Great insight. Jennifer, were you going to go on mute? Not to pick on you. Which Jennifer? <laughs> you. Let's go with you. I see your face. Uh oh. Um, I think we run a year round program. And so we do hire a fair number, like 15 seasonal summer staff members. And I think I find our biggest challenge is in clarity of job description so that that responsibility and accountability can really, you know, take place. So, um, meaning like within our program staff, we might have eight different program staff and they all have primary roles and responsibilities, but then their secondary role really is to support their other program team members. Um, and so each year we try to clarify exactly what that means for those all campus activities that everybody has a role in that. and. Um, holding those people accountable who kind of don't show up because they know somebody else will, I think is our biggest challenge and that it gets done ultimately. But Spencer, I love your point about not asking anyone to do anything we wouldn't do, but if they see us doing it, sometimes others will take a back seat and assume they don't need to participate in that because others are. Um, so I think that's something we just continue to work on, but I'm, I'm open to people's suggestions on how to be more successful with that. Okay. I really, and I think that also goes back to something Spencer had said just about like people's buy-in. I think uh, back to even the definitions of responsibility of like, is this something I'm willing to take on? Um, it's interesting working in a nonprofit and working with a lot of volunteers. Um, I have volunteers to two extremes. One, Jennifer, to your point, people were just be like, oh, someone else is going to do it. So I send a massive email saying, I need 15 volunteers for this event that we're doing for a fundraiser. No one will probably respond to me. It, it just because everyone assumes someone else is going to do it. And then I have a cohort of volunteers who are my busy bees, who are like working parents, who are like professional people who like do 20 battle teams on 20 different boards. And they are the people who respond back to me and like, oh, did you get enough volunteers? I'll, I'm willing to help out. And I'm like, you're the busiest person. Like, I don't want to like bother you with this, but like busy people make things happen. So it's, it's both and, right? So how do you get the buy-in for people? And then also how do you begin the process of allowing to say like, I really want to nudge this person in this direction, right? And say like, hey, I think you can do this. I want you to feel comfortable doing this, but like, I believe in you. It's going to be outside of your scope a little, but what do you think about trying this on? Anyone else thoughts on what's going on in your camp in particular?
If not, or if so, please put something in the chat and I'm happy to circle back. I want to go back to the point of just like, how do we, how to get volunteers um, buy-in or how do we get people to actually like claim this responsibility and work with it? Um, do you think it's a, Jennifer, you said it's a matter of clarity, right? Giving people clear directions of what, what you want and maybe that's why they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, Dennis, you mentioned something also about um, it's hard to manage some of these volunteers that have them with their follow through. Um, is it clarity? Is it buy-in? What, what do you think the issue is why people aren't doing what they're saying to be doing? Because I imagine all of you, what you describe, you're willing to hold people accountable for it. So it's a matter of then how do you, the accountability that you're offering them is not working. So how do we change that? I, I think, and Dina, you feel free to jump in on this if you'd like, but I think with camp, with us, um, <laughs> the problem isn't usually follow through, although that happens on occasion, it's usually overextending into other things that aren't part of their purview that becomes the problem, um, where they want more control or they want to be doing other people's jobs because they don't think other people are doing them well. And it's trying to pull them back. Jennifer, I appreciate that healthy nod. Um, <laughs> see, I'm seeing you nod. Um, but it, it on occasion, I think we do have people who don't complete and we're pretty good about having those conversations with them, um, those impromptu circles or impromptu conversations to address those. It's harder to address uh, people's <laughs> anxiety might be a good word around someone else isn't doing their work and how they feel about that. Um, Dina, is that fair? Is that a good way to say it? <laughs> yeah, I, right. I think it, we, you know, we have a lot of very passionate um, people and who, who feel that they can potentially do it better or differently and, um, and right. So yes, you did describe that very well. I appreciated uh, that comment. I can relate to that. Um, I have volunteers who've been doing their jobs for many times. And um, what's interesting is that we, some of our volunteers also come from very prominent um, backgrounds. They're either a fire chief, they hold some position of power, they're a doctor, right? Uh, so they take what their personal life is and then inject that into a camp life and think that their authoritative voice may continue to cross over. Um, and I always feel like one of the things that we have to remind our all volunteers, all people who are at camp is, what is your job at camp versus what is your job at home, right? And this is, comes into play often when I have nurses or um, firefighters or anything, there's a mercy, they all wanna run towards it. I'm like, what's your job? I think you're a counselor, right? You're a counselor, you're not part of the medical team, right? So what is our scope and practice? I also have people at, at our camp, we um, allow kids to organically have the conversation and we'll do some professionally facilitated conversation about being a survivor. Um, but we don't really encourage our counselors to dive into people's stories because they don't really even know all the background and what the complexities of people's story as a survivor. So we want that to be more if a kid decides to share with you, but some people feel like scope and practice in, oh, that's my job as a counselor. I need to like work with their this and that. And like your job is to make sure that they're safe. Your job is to make sure that they're eating. Your job is like, ah, that's not one of the functions. Yes, safety of emotional safety, totally great, but you know, learning what is and reminding people of what their job is. So that that notion of also people having comments uh, of other people work is more to the diagram in that picture that we saw when we thought about accountability with all these fingers pointing at one person, right? And being under this microscope of like the work that we're doing. So maybe the issue is not no accountability. The issue is maybe inappropriate accountability where everyone feels it's their job or their responsibility to keep other people around because they care about the organization so much and they are so passionate about the organization, they don't want to see something fail, but then they're objecting their own views onto this other person. Does that sum up kind of what, what some people are feeling and, and thinking? More, more so, what, I see some quasi Dennis. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm processing. <laughs> cool. 
That's fine. I'm thinking about that. I think when we, we think about this is like going back to this image of, of what is positive accountability, right? So how do we, and this goes into the term of shame or into the term of what we're really wanting to the better outcome of like, how do we communicate to each other effectively? How do we offer uh, support to one another when it's not our responsibility? My responsibility may not be lifeguards. I might have an opinion though. I might have a lived experience that I can share with someone, but what is appropriate for me in communicating that, right? And, and how do I then, so not only tell someone how they do their job, but also say, you didn't do your job correctly or you didn't do this because no one wants to be in a position paid or not, where people are critiquing the work that they're doing, right? That doesn't ever feel good in a situation, even if there's good intent there. So what does it look like for us to offer accountability? Um, and when I think about the, the concept of what we were discussing in positive accountability is really the ability to get an outside perspective from others, right? The, the communicating openly and candidly is to really say, hey, this is my thought and this is why I'm saying this. Um, being able to receive feedback as well as be able to ask for feedback, um, learning um, and hearing and, and saying hard things um, that we see in terms of reality. And there's times when it's appropriate and not appropriate. So really, I can't tell you within your camp structure what you should be doing. I can't tell you that you can't have lateral comments or lateral feedback. We kind of do that already within evaluations when you're evaluating um, overall camp or overall uh, positions at camp, but how you fill that in and what you do with that is really up to you as a camp. And I think being able to really take a closer look at, is this communication effective or is this communication now an opinion and how, what is the best way, right? So if someone feels the need to say something, is it something that they need to say at that moment? Or is it something that you encourage them to be like, I feel like you have a great idea um, right now we're in the mix of it, like, can we pause that thought and reevaluate it, you know, for next year, right? Cause we're already in the, the middle of scheduling these activities right now, maybe not the best time to throw a wrench into the situation. Or is it a situation of like, if I give this opinion right now, it is because there's a safety or liability concern and we need to say it right. So finding that balance and finding like, who do you find as a camp can make that call for you as an organization? And protecting your volunteers on all levels. Tell me what you guys are thinking. Tell me what you what, what's what's resonating with you, or what are what are the things that are going on with this, and maybe we can work on this together. And in, in terms of what what's works well and what doesn't. Um. One thing that I find works well in this situation, and it's a lot easier to do when it's someone in a position of leadership or someone that's on a team. This is a lot harder to do with basic counselors or first time volunteers, but you, sh in my opinion, you should never be giving someone a critique or feedback consistently without giving them the opportunity to do the same, where if you're going into a scenario and constantly reevaluating someone's position or performance and without giving them a chance to sort of swing feedback back at you. Even it can be the most minute detail that they give you or something totally outrageous, which you ignore. But I find it's people will take feedback a lot well if they feel like they're being heard first or being heard at all. Because a lot of times in positions of power, it's very easy to constantly be giving feedback down. And it sort of taking the perspective from the other end, it can sort of feel like you're being beat down without any chance to sort of swing back up, if that makes sense. Absolutely. One of the things we started at our camp, um, because we have a lot of people who have a lot of opinions, um, is that before stating your opinion or getting involved in some, something, whether you're a supervisor or not, um, is to say, can I give you some feedback? asking, right? Giving a consent of like, can I, can I say something? Would you like feedback, right? And being able to ask that consent question allows and change the mindset of it instead of being told something, but then asking someone, can I give you something, right? Those are two different approaches that you're going to be receiving. Um, and then there are other ways as an organization in which someone may 
not ask consent and may not ask what you're saying. So in that situation, um, we we have a phrase called um, like eye lag or ouch, right? So in, if someone says like, you hurt my eye lag or you, uh, ouch, it, it's an acronym that allows us to understand of like, hey, I didn't really appreciate that. I'm not sure where that came from, but like, I was trying to do this and then you just kind of dumped on me, right? So it's a nice way for when someone hears I lock or ouch at our camp that they understand of like, oh, maybe I overstep myself or maybe I, they don't need that for me right now. Um, so I, I definitely think there are some areas in which you can do some of the additional things. Um, what happened? Can you explain that more, Dennis? Like, what, what do you, when you always ask, like, what happened? Yeah, I'll just go on to Spencer's, Spencer's point that he was sharing. We, we always get their story first. You know what I mean? It, it, we don't enter into it with, you screwed up. We enter, we enter into the conversation with, so tell me what happened in this situation. Just so we can really hear from them what happened. Um, and then, you know, we, we ask them what they were thinking at the time and, and what have they thought about since that time and, you know, who's potentially being impacted by what they've done or, or, the, or what they haven't done, um, who, who's being impacted by that and how is it hurting their relationships with those people. We really try to frame it in a relationship point of view um, because we care about people. We, we don't we care about our volunteers. We don't want them to feel bad. We don't want them to disengage. So we we really frame the lack, you know, accountability through the lens of relationships, and we try really hard to do it that way, um, just so that we they understand we value you, we care about you, and you're hurting other people, and you're hurting me, and this is an uncomfortable conversation for me, um, and we just try to talk about it in that in that way, but. I very much agreed with what Spencer was saying. That's why I posted that because we always ask them what happened first. We don't, we don't jump in pointing fingers. That's not how we approach it either. And, and that may work for, for your camp because that's the culture of your camp is a relational camp, right? So that is a very big a component, right? So when I said, I can't prescribe to you guys what you should be doing, it really depends on the structure policies and culture that you've created. For an organization that is relational to say you hurt my feelings or you hurt someone else's feelings is going to be the trigger point where they're going to realize they're like whoa i'm going to back off i didn't mean to do that that wasn't my intention right yeah correct for other people they may need to go and refer back to a job description and say hey you didn't do x y and z right that that's maybe their culture of their camp is that they're not a relational camp so maybe for them they need to go back to a policy manual and they need to go back to a job description and say, hey, I'm holding you accountable. This is what you said you're going to do. This is what I expect of you. And it may not be because they don't have that cultural relational purpose uh, or, or uh, pursuit that they may try something differently. I know that for my organization in, in terms of accountability, um, I begin all of my meetings with all of my staff by saying, before we begin, I want to do a check-in. How are you as a person? So if I'm angry or disappointed in action, I want to know, hey, how are you doing? What's going on with you right now? And what that allows me to do, because I work very relational with my, my personal staff, is to see if there's outside factors that may have contributed to what happened or didn't happen and why the situation happened the way it did. So if they tell me, you know, it's been really hard at home, this X, Y, and Z happened, it gives me a little, at least grace in my mind of like, okay, in the future, I need you to communicate with me. I need you to tell me when these things are going to happen so that I can help you with your work or that I can assist you to get something done. Um, the other thing that we start is after our check-in is that I encourage my staff to say, tell me everything that you have not been able to complete or everything that you may have that, you know, that I may want to know. And what that does is it allows them to take the onus instead of me saying, hey, you did this or you didn't do this. It allows them to be the ones to say out front and take away that shame factor. And they're owning a mistake that they made. They're owning what is going on. And no longer do they feel shameful of it. And now we can go into the take away the shame factor of it and really just address what the issue was and how to make sure it doesn't happen again. Again, these are things that may not work for your camp 
But these are things in my experience that if I really allow them to say, you have the ability to tell me from your own words. I'm not even going to get mad at you. I don't want, I don't want you to feel like I'm going to beat you down. I want to hear from you what, what is going on. And then I want to hear like how we can fix it for the future. I, I have a question. Go ahead, Ashley. Um, so the camp that I am the director for is just a week long camp um, and it's run through the children's hospital. Um, so all the people who come to camp are volunteers um, except for the medical staff who like split the week. Um, and so I'm hearing all these great things about like the relationship building and the accountability and the conversations. Um, but I'm wondering if anyone has thoughts on like how to do that in such a smaller setting, in a shorter setting, um, to who's had experience like building those relationships quickly. Um, because I kind of feel like ours is sometimes like a hit and run. It's like camp. Okay, see you next year. Um, so I'm kind of wondering what people's thoughts are on that. Yeah, great question. People want to share with what their thoughts are. Um, sure. Uh, one thing that I find to help out very early on into a summer or into a session, or as you're saying, if it's just a very short period of time, is sometimes making people get attached to their impact on the camp, because it's, obviously it's a lot easier to give feedback in a personal relationship, but it's also easier to understand and take feedback if you understand how you're affecting the camp program as a whole. So we called this seeing the whole board, where it's a lot easier to give feedback to someone if you can explain how them being late to dinner just made the kitchen staff clean for an extra 30 minutes after their shift, which made them get home late to their families, which means they need to come in earlier tomorrow. So sometimes even if the personal relationships aren't always there to be holding people accountable, sort of a lot of people understanding what other people go through and the sort of work that a program takes as a whole, you can sometimes use that to your advantage to you get accountability going early on. Great. I think that goes back to the point of consequences, right? Consequences, there's consequences for when things don't happen and whether that consequences impact them or doesn't impact, there's a consequence that was there from a situation. So I think that's a, a great tip. I will say another thing regarding shame in particular um, is that what I find sometimes what happens at camps, and this goes from the camper level to your volunteers or staff, um, no one likes to be pointed out in front of a group. And I think sometimes we find ourselves in the heat of a moment of like making an example of someone or talking to someone in a group setting. So really understanding what is the time and place of what is a good conversation, right? And, and there's there shouldn't be a degree of like you're trying to hide something, right? So if something happens, there are times in which you have to call it out and then pull someone aside or figure out what's going to be appropriate. But someone's all, already going to be defensive if they know that they've done something wrong. Um, but then if you do it and you try to address it in a group setting, that may actually be worse for this individual. So I think it's also like understanding the individual and what they're coming to the, the camp with and realizing where's the appropriate time and place, right? Is this something I address right now? Is this something I address later on? Um, I think that, that really plays into um, the factor as well. Any closing thoughts or, or comments as we kind of get to our hour mark? We're going to be moving over to the debrief in about five minutes, but you know, I, I want to give everyone a chance to say something that they had or pose a question to the group and, and really get some more clarity on these accountability and responsibility um, junctures. Good. Cool. 
Um, well, it was a pleasure to to dive into this conversation with you guys. I should have warned you in the beginning. Um, I do a lot of support groups, so I'm very used to awkward uh, silence. <laughs> so if no one talks, like I live in that. I always mention that to the group. I'm like it's uncomfortable for you, but not for me. So I'll just sit here until someone talks, because eventually what it does is get someone to say something. Um, there's a lot here, and I think. Um, if you decide to go with a camp culture that is relational or maybe not relational that you know them or that they know you, but you, you want to create of like on a humanistic value per, uh, perspective, um, the person who does some great work on shame is Brene Brown. And I'm sure you guys are pretty familiar with Brene Brown, but I really try to incorporate a lot of my psychosocial um, key points is that a lot of times, I think, especially as medical specialty camps or as camps, um, we focus on a lot of like training that's going on um, related to, you know, ropes course or, you know, camper management when you have a camper who's too hyperactive or doesn't want to go to sleep or is homesick. But we don't talk about development of staff in, regard, in regards to like the baggage that we bring in or how we can be better humans in general. So I really try to incorporate like, how do I focus and give you some tools of self-care, right? How do I get some things that are gonna be nuggets for you that I'm like, you've hit your wall, it's 110 outside, you have a bunch of kids who are screaming and yelling at you, how do you find that center point, right? Is it tapping into your co-counselor and be like, give me five, I'm gonna go and do a breathing exercise, right? So I've done breathing exercises with my staff as staff development. I've done guided meditations with our staff, like really making sure that they have those tools because not only for them, but that they can also train their campers on how to use these things because most people come with some kind of baggage and trauma and, and shame is definitely a big thing. Well, Thank you all for being here today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and adventures. Hopefully you come to the debrief tomorrow and um, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks all.